Welcome to The Rock Church and World Outreach Center. We pray that this message will strengthen and encourage you. Now here's a message from one of the pastors here at The Rock. All right. Well, if you didn't catch that, the greeters actually handed them out to you, the little um, white piece of paper. Did you guys get those? Okay, so write your little question down. And where is Antonio? This is Antonio, if anybody does not know who I am. Can we say hi, Antonio? He will run and grab your question for you, okay? So this is a very kickback night. We're just going to hang out and get to know all these lovely people. And so, um, and then also, please text in your questions. We will get them directly. If you text a crazy one, we'll text you crazy back. So I'm just kidding. (laughs) So um, before we get started, I'm going to pray, and then I'll have the panel introduce themselves. So let's just go before the Lord. Dear Father God, we love you. And Lord, thank you for this time that we are just going to commit to talk about family. Holy Spirit, we just ask that you would just come and and um, speak through every minister up here, God, and I pray that you would just give an answer for every question. And Lord, we thank you that your heart would be shown through this this panel today, God. And Lord, we just love you and we thank you. And Lord, we just pray that you breathe on us right now in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Well, Pastor Michelle, how are you? What? You're not on. Okay, so this is Pastor Michelle. Isn't she beautiful? She just had a baby. Hi, Isn't everybody. <laughs> Hi. Pastor Michelle and Pastor Richard are our youth pastors, yeah. and she is in women's ministry like we just co-host stuff a lot together. So I wanted her to tag team with me tonight, okay? So Pastor Michelle, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and then introduce some of the panel for us? Okay, sounds good. Well, I'm Pastor Michelle. I grew up in this church. I like to call myself homegrown. Uh, Pastor Mike and Sue were my children's pastors, and then I met Richard in youth ministry, so take your kids to youth. I'm telling you, they'll find their spouses over there for later, later. But, um, and we've uh, been youth pastors here and we just love it. I, we have three kids and uh, God is good. So this handsome guy right here is Richard Villanueva. Do you want to tell them a little bit about yourself? <laughs> no, I, I'm on. Um, no, I, nothing. I can't really add anything, but this is my wife and, and uh, she, uh, oh, this is my wife and she puts up with me. So. Very good. So. I swear I'm not muting him, I swear. (laughs) She likes to keep me around. So that's it. Just me. And then we have Dr. V next. So Dr. V, tell us a little bit about yourself. Dr. Vanessa Reynolds, but we call her Dr. V. And Rev, she's the Reverend. Dr. Reverend Dr. V. Reverend Dr. We don't know what to, there's so many number, letters in front of your name. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. (laughs) We like to choose her. I am a a mother of five. We've been at The Rock for uh, like 19 years, 18 years. And um, I work in the married's ministry and the women's ministry. What else? That's and she awesome. teaches in the Bible college. Oh, I teach in the Bible college. I do. Yes. She's awesome. She can preach, too, at Girlfriends. Man, she brought it last time. Okay. <laughs> then we have Pastor Eleanor Becker, and she came all the way from South Africa to us here at the Rock Church. And, man, has been such a blessing to the church. So tell us a little bit about you. Well, I'm blessed to be here. I'm a mom of three children. they all grown. Youngest is um, done with college. And praise God. Hallelujah. Anybody? <laughs> they finally can... Um, live their own lives. Not quite. They do come back, they say. Anyway, three kids, um, nine years at The Rock. Before that, my husband and I pastored in different places in South Africa and the East Coast in the ministry now for over 30 years, but almost 10, well, going on 10 years at The Rock. So it's been amazing. And I'm honored to work with the women's ministry with Pastor Jessica, Pastor Deborah, Dr. Vanessa, amazing team, teaching the Bible college, offer spiritual guidance, and just honored to pastor here at The Rock. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And then last but not least is Pastor Joel Alvarado. And he, if you know Pastor Joel, I'm sure he's told many of you, you know, he tells it like it is. Amen? So, Pastor Joel, tell us a little bit about you. Well, you know, I, I've been honored and privileged to come and be a part of this amazing staff. But before I was a staff member, we were volunteering everywhere here at The Rock. And we just fell in love with The Rock and what The Rock represented um, and then the Lord called us into ministry. Now I'm overseeing many ministries, including SBT, uh, Restoration, Breaking Free, and a few other things. And we're just honored to serve God's people. I'm a PK, pastor's kid. I married a PK, Joanna's mom and dad pastored. So there's many, many years of ministry under us. It's an honor to serve the house of God, and it's an honor to serve God's people. And that's why we're here. Amen. All right. Awesome. Awesome. 
Okay, so Pastor Michelle, have you gotten any questions in? I have, I have. Uh, I've gotten a lot of questions, so that's great, you guys. Okay, this one is the very first one, so let's start there. It says, at what age can I still use the rod? Ooh. We're getting right into spanking. Okay? <laughs> when can I beat my kids? No, no, no. Um, does anybody want to answer that question? Probably until they can spank back. No. I, I would... <laughs> that might be a good way to go. So. And if, if they you're spank in here, back, you're not laughing. We're kidding, okay? We're kidding. And another another one asks, you know, how should you biblically spank your kids? So, so uh, a couple people want to know specifically, <laughs> how do I spank my children? When is when are they too old? Eleanor, I know you got an answer for this one. You know, I, I did it all wrong when my kids were little. I just want to say, you know, it, life is a process, it's a journey. Um, and I have found a couple of things. The age of the kid will depend, I think, on their heart. But yeah, if they start hitting you back, run away and all that, then you know you're in for trouble. Uh, personally, we have, my husband and I have believed to be real strong and strict on kids at a very young age. We just, we just believe that if you go at a young age, as young as possible, you know the little things that are cute? At a young age that's not so cute when they're 16, <laughs> you're going to see those things going at a very young age. So that when they grow older, when they at an age of school, going to school, um, and it will be different for, every, different for everybody, but as far as us, kids are four and five years old and six years old, you should be over the worst of taking care of that rebellion um, when they are younger. Um, and don't spank out of anger. As I say, we've done, I have done things wrong many times, but God has redeemed me. But yeah, at an age, you have to be very careful. Um, uh, every child is different. Some kids respond well to spanking. I've had, I have three kids. One of my kids would not listen without it. The others, you know, another one, um, I could just look at him a certain way and he would be just getting in line. So it's a big topic, but maybe somebody else has something to add to that. Is anybody else? Dr. V? I know you're waiting. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, I agree with Pastor Eleanor. Um, I don't think it's a specific age. I think it's the heart. And I think that we just need to remember that all of our children are different. And I think, um, I think Pastor Jim preaches, not that I did this or do this, but I think he preaches that, you know, the rod is a small twig, you know, a flexible twig. And on the behind, I got beat with the belt. I beat with the belt. So I'm not the best judge of a biblical... Um, <laughs> a biblical way of discipline but yeah you're supposed to get a small twig off a branch outside and on the behind that's what you're biblically supposed to do good 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 well i have proverbs 13 24 and it says those who spare the rod of discipline hate their children and those who love their children care enough to discipline them now i know that for me in our life and pastor michelle and richard you can probably help me out here we have the real little kids right now and I think it started at one years old. Was it the same for you guys? I, I just remember every one of my three children, it was like one years old. Oh, what happened to you? You know, and, and I remember my mom going, oh, that Sunday shirt's coming out. And so I didn't recognize it at first, but it's when they are coming against you. And a couple tips, just do you mind a couple tips? What I've done is Dan and I, we make sure that we're not mad. So if you are really hot in that moment and, you know, they've been real rebellious, I suggest you go and walk away for a second. Tell them you're mad and they're getting in trouble, but you're going to come right back. And I go into another spot and I pray and I ask God to calm my heart down and let me deal with this the right way. And then I get down on their level. I explain to them why they're getting a spanking. We get a little twig off the tree. Now, listen, I've heard of people getting branches and like massive things like I'll, no 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 we are not saying that it's a just a little and it zaps the little butt and stings it doesn't even leave a mark because all it's doing is it's reminding them that whatever they just did that oh man that stings and so next time I go to do that I'm gonna remember I don't want to get stinged you know and I'm telling you um I'll, I'll use an example of our son just recently this week you know for a week he's kind of been acting up a little bit and I said to Dan, do you think he needs a little reboot? You know, he's like, he's six years old and I don't have to spank too much with him anymore. Now, listen, there were days that I was like, I'm the worst mom in the world, like spanking all day long, you know, but that passes, I promise. But be co consistent because children will see your flaws. And if you say, oh, you're getting a spanking when we get home and you don't do it, they know mama ain't going to do it. So they're going to keep acting up. So 
this week, we said to Micah, Micah, you need, you need a reboot. And he's like, no, 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 I don't, I know, no, I don't, I'm good, you know. And he did something else, and we just gave him a little spanking. And I'm telling you, he's been an angel since then. And so sometimes I do think there is an anointing on it because it just reminds them, oh, yeah, I'm the kid, you're the parent, I need to obey you, I need to not screw up, you love me. And then afterwards, explain to them, I love you. You are a wonderful child. We're going to get through this, and we're going to do this together. And I just know that for me and my kids, there's never been animosity or hatred, but they've understood that discipline is healthy and that it's good for them. And listen, we, we live in a society with no boundaries, and we need to put some boundaries on these kids because we all need boundaries. So, Amen. Good. I don't know if that helps, but... Good, good, good. Okay, this is a good one. It says, um, should you force your spouse to attend church with you? You know, we're talking about family. Should you force your spouse to attend church with you? Pastor Joel, why don't you take you that know, one? I really believe as you follow Christ and you follow the Lord, he will help you even if you're alone. Um, I just want to say, if you're a single parent here and you're raising kids, either mom, single mom or single dad, there's many single dads too. We neglect often to repeat that and suggest that. There is single dads. You now need to do what God's commanding you to do and come into the house of God to get covered, get protected, get taught, get schooled, get parent by God, and God will raise you up and be the leader of your house. If you're a mom here that's struggling with your husband jumping on board, you'd be surprised when you act godly and consistent of how the Holy Spirit moves in their life in a direction that's godly without you even suggesting or saying anything or fighting about it. Why? Because God's on your position as a parent and guiding your children into the house of God. And he will enable you and anoint you to do that. I've seen many, many dads come to Christ because the godliness of the mother and especially the children who often make them feel guilty by them not being in the house of God. Now, it's not out of guilt. It's out of the sheer respect of what the house of God is teaching your children. And it's the sheer respect of honoring God in the house. So if you're struggling today, and, and many people do. We get the phone calls. We get the spiritual guidances. We say you continue and you pray like crazy. You fast. You put uh, God first. And you watch God will somehow get to your husband, either through a co-worker, someone out on the street. Um, God will bug them and they will now come under. But if you nag them... If you do the worldly advice, like, you know, beat up on them or, you know, go into fights, that will never work. That will lead to more fraction, not healing and restoration. You lead the charge and God got your back. That's good. Good. Good answer. Um, if I could just add one thing. God answers prayers when it comes to unsafe family members. I had a family member. I prayed for him 13 years. And it took 13 years of prayer until I remember I was in that seat right over there, Pastor Joe is, and he, during the middle of an altar call, it was an unusual altar call, got up out of his seat, came to the altar, and fell on his knees. And I'll tell you this, God answers prayers to the, to the wives and the husbands out there believing for your spouse. You know, I can't tell you. Stand in faith, be patient, and honor God, and he will answer your yes. prayers. That's good. Can I say something? You know, if this is for women who want your husbands to come, just... Do not fall in the trap of making your husband feel guilty, preaching, laying hands, praying in tongues, and spraying oil over him, and, you know, just do all those things. The Bible calls you to honor your husband with a gentle and a quiet spirit, serve him, love him. Don't make him feel guilty, make him feel loved. And do that as a spouse, and that is what will draw, not the things that you will preach and put guilt and condemnation. But you sometimes, I know, you get so angry, you get so upset that you cannot help it, and you spit things out of your mouth you wish you could take back. But oftentimes you talk to the other spouse, and they will tell you, yes, I feel horrible. I feel, I am so unspiritual. I feel like I'm nothing. I, 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 I don't know if, I, I don't even want to go to church for that reason. So just love your spouses. Love them to life. Okay. Good wisdom. Okay. Wait, wait, before you go there, is Antonio, stand up. Okay, does anybody need, have questions? Just go ahead and raise them up. Antonio's going to run. We're going to watch him run. Everyone stare at him. No, I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> okay, Pastor Michelle, go ahead and answer a question while he okay, does Okay, we have the teenagers in here tonight. Where are the teenagers at? Woo -woo. All right, there you guys are. 
Um, so this one is a really good one. It says, how do you help a teenage boy or girl survive a divorce? So that, that's a very good question. And I think, Richard, you should probably share about that because you survived a divorce. And, uh, you know, um, uh, my, my parents split when I was about 16, 17 years old. And I'll tell you this to, to all my teenagers in the house. The only thing that kept me was being in the house of God. Because uh, I'll tell you this, when, when your house is not safe, maybe you don't know many safe people in your life. I'll tell you this, the house of God is a sanctuary and it's a safe place. I'll tell you this, uh, when, when, my, when my, my parents were going through their ups and downs, and it was a process, I'll tell you. Um, but I found myself at church more often than I was at home. And that's because I knew where the goods were at. You know, nothing against my mom and my dad, because I tell you, I love my mom and dad. There's nobody in my life like them, and I love them to pieces. But, you know, at that time in life, it was, I was fed, I was encouraged, I, I found friends that I could trust here in the house, and I'll tell you, God spoke to me, and you know, I, I've seen it go both ways. And I, I tell you, as a, as a teenager out there, if, you're, if your family is going through a divorce, then I'll tell you, run to the throne of God. Run to the house of God. Get into your word, and I'll tell you, God will begin to surround you with his grace, and he will give you peace in the middle of your storm. And when you need to talk, you'll find people in this place, in this place, that you can share your heart with. You'll find people that will pray with you. And you know what? If you have a challenge, if you have a need, don't be silent. Go get help. Go get help. And if, you, and if you look for it in the right place, I'll tell you this, you'll find it and you'll be blessed. And that's what kept me. Good, 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 good. Do you want to we, get... We've had, we have a ministry called Breaking Free for Youth. Breaking yeah. Free for Youth is designed uh, to have a safe place for youth to come mm -hmm. and to talk and converse and to connect with God and with others. And oftentimes, divorce is a part of that issue. Yeah. Um, and these teenagers that carry uh, this brokenheartedness towards their parents separating, we walk them to a, a pattern of forgiveness. Why? Because if, unless they forgive those that are around them, they're going to stay in unforgiveness and marry in unforgiveness. Yeah. And that will uh, lead to a br more broken relationship. And that's the pattern of the enemy to continue to debilitate you as an individual, maybe a teen that wants to get married but has a bad reference point. Yeah. or bad uh, connection, or bad emotion, or bad abuse, whatever the case, like Pastor Richard. When you walk through those steps with Jesus, he has your best interest, and he teaches you how to be the man and the woman of God that you need to be. And walking through that, uh, 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 that process, we have seen literally families restored. Uh, parents get back into a relationship because their teen have forgiven them and has walked through that relationship with Jesus first. That's the mandate um, for these kids to get healed. We've seen a lot of brokenness for generations. God rewrites that script. God wants to now do something better than just to see brokenness and to see separation. He wants to heal you so now you can have a relationship, teenager, I'm talking to the teens that your mom and dad really didn't have. There's a lot of reasons why they get divorced. Most often than not, the teenagers blame themselves. Yeah. That's not the reality. The reality is they've had problems or they had an issue that they couldn't overcome. Well, don't let their issue become your issue. So now walk through that with Jesus and watch what happens to you as a person as you grow up. And wait for the opportunities for God to bring you something. And continue to love your parents through this, this process. And be that godly person and that good child and that righteous child to continue to pray for mom and dad. Don't ever get in the way of saying, okay, I'm going to pick sides or I'm going to now do something against somebody uh, as, a, as a weapon. The enemy would love for you to do that. Walk in forgiveness and love your mom and dad for where they're at. Love your mom and dad in their brokenness. But don't let that mirror your heart and uh, scab your heart so now you can't have the relationship God wants you to have. Yeah. That's good. Let me just um, add one thing. Um, those were great answers for the team going through, but to... Um, us as um, Christians, if you know of a teen going through, because I was from a divorced home, and I think that through that divorce, 
I went straight to the church like Pastor Richard did, and it was um, a godly woman who saw I was going through and kind of took me under her wing and mentored me, which is why I got saved, which is why I came to love the Lord the way I know now. And so if you just take a little bit of time and give a little bit of love and that little, I mean, she would just take me home sometimes after lunch, and she taught me how to cook. She taught me, you know, just the things that God in a practical way and just kind of became a second mother during a time when it was very difficult. And so if we could just open our hearts to these children that are in need, if we know of a family going through, I think that'll be a big blessing too. Yes. That's awesome. Nice. That's something good. You know, that's awesome. And Pastor Michelle, your mom, I remember having her having a conversation with me. And when your dad and mom were younger and they had all of you girls, she told me, that her and your dad decided that they were going to adopt a family that didn't have a father. And they loved a family, and they're in this church, and they loved them, they became your friends, they became like family to your family. Yeah. And they just came alongside them and, and loved them and helped them in any way they could. And I just, that was such a witness to me. I was like, what a blessing. And here we are, all of you are sitting here, and you know what, you probably know someone that you can be a blessing to. And so just pray and ask God in your prayer time, who is it that I could bless somebody? You know, it says, let the older teach the younger. Well, you have a job here. We have, we, that's why we have gender gen is because we need each other. And so what a beautiful, beautiful testimony. Thank you. Well, Dr. V, I'm going to actually gear this one towards you. As a large family, how do I show or let my kids know that I treat them all equal and that they are different, but I, they are equal? How do, how do you make all the kids feel special, I think, is what they're probably saying. Um, I think the best thing to do is just to have that personal time with each child. You know, um, I have extroverts, introverts, uh, every um, spectrum of the rainbow, um, but I try to spend personal time with them and point out their, um, their assets, their gifts from God, and to tell them, you know, how important they are to me. Um, and I try to do it often. Um, they get, they don't like it, <laughs> but I still do it. I mean, you just have to say, you know, you are so special and there's a special plan and a purpose for you. And I just love the way God gave you this and how he's using you in this. And um, then they realize that, you know, they're not the same as their older brother and um, try not to compare. Um, that's a big thing too. And I haven't always been successful in that, but um, I get convicted and I go back and I apologize, but you try not to compare that, you know, you're, you're unique, I'm not calling you to this standard, I'm calling you to be you at this level, you know, and do the, be the best you that you can be. So. Well, we had, you know, a total of five, uh, five kids, we adopted three, so that added seven to our family. That we lived because of adoption. Adoption was not my first idea, my adoption was not my first choice. Uh, my wife, Pastor Joanna, felt in her heart, you know, that we needed to adopt. Adoption does something crazy to you. It opens up your world to love those that aren't necessarily yours, per se. Um, and the Lord changed my life through it. As I looked through the scripture, I found all kinds of references of spiritual adoption. But one day I opened up the Bible and I seen Joseph. And that really spoke to me because he adopted Jesus. If we believe the word of God and we believe that Mary was a virgin and she was, and we believe in the virgin birth, there was an embracing from uh, Joseph to embrace Jesus as a son. And that was a physical evidence that God believes in adoption. Adoption and migration to our own family, even though our kids were Caucasian and I'm Latino, it was noticeable. But what we did by, on purpose was celebrate them, celebrate their birthday parties, get them over to grandma's house, celebrate who they were, didn't change identity, embrace them as a family member, like God embraces us. We're aliens, the Bible says, and he brings us close. Adoption does that supernaturally, uh, biblically supernaturally, but ev evidentially and also spiritually and physically. It changed our world. I learned how to love the loveless. I learned how to embrace the fatherless because all our kids were fatherless when we adopted them. So there was something that God did to us. How you blend is you embrace life, you embrace the purpose of life. You know, you might have a family that's, you know, divided. You might have a family that is a mixed, bl blended family. You know, don't so sell yourself short. That's your family. 
They're all your family. They're all your kids. By the anointing of God, you're in charge of them. And because you're in charge of them, you're going to embrace them as a, a mother, as a father. And that's what God wants you to do. Don't separate them. Yes, sometimes because of divorce and other issues and complications. But when you celebrate stuff like birthday parties and, and Christmas, embrace all of them. Don't selectively say you're better or I'm better or they're better or in my case, those are your kids, which ones are your kids and which ones did you adopt? I came to the conclusion they're all my kids and I forget which ones they are because God gave them all to us. Awesome. Well, that's good because a blended family, do you have any questions on blended families? Um, I do. One of them says, um, we're a blended family. When should I start disciplining their kids? So with the disciplining issue, they've been married. Um, anybody want to jump in on that? Well, I do know what Pastor Sue has taught me. Yeah. <laughs> and she said something to us the other day when we were just talking. Yeah. Who was it? I don't know who I she remember. was talking to. I was there. With me. Huh? And she said, so I'm going to speak for you. Is that okay? So um, she said that when her and Pastor Mike got married, that they, Pastor Mike had a daughter. Her name is Shawnee. She's an amazing, amazing woman. And um, that... He, she would discipline Shawnee, and Pastor Sue says, I think I was probably harsh, but he would always back me. And then in the room, in the bedroom, you know, like when she was gone, she, he would explain to me, that was a little, you know, harsh. She, you're not understanding her. You need to ex understand her personality. And, but he would always back Pastor Sue in front of Shawnee. And then they started to figure out how to do it the right way. But what it did was it brought, she said it brought unity to their home. And Shawnee started to respect her as an actual parent. And so that's how they've done it. I know in our home, you know, there was just a blatant rule. You live under this house and we're the parents, so you're getting disciplined. I mean, that's just like, because we come from a blended family. Kim is my dad's, Miranda's is my mom's. Then Luke and I are together. And I just remember mom and dad were like, you're in trouble if you're in trouble. So I do know that that was a tough situation. And mom has talked about that many times and when, during the parenting series. So you can go back and get, I think it was two weeks ago that she talked about the blended family and all that. So if you want to go back and get that CD, that might be really good for you to get. Um, but blended family, it is a touchy subject. So you and your spouse, from what I'm hearing from everybody else, you probably should be in unity on the subject. You need to sit down and have a real candid, safe talk and say, this is where we're at. We, you know, we need to be united front. And that's what I always hear, a united front. So just make sure that you have that intact. In and then you can come meet with a pastor. They will come help you walk through it too as well. So I'd just like to add, you know, uh, Amos 3.3, can two walk together unless they've agreed to meet? I think that's one of the strongest things parents can do is to be on the same page. Because when mom says one thing and dad says another thing, then, then all of a sudden you have division. And God's never to divide. God's to bring unity. And, you know, when mom and dad get on the same page and they say the same thing, you know, especially in front of the kids, then you have an understanding from the top down. So I would, I, I would definitely agree with that. You know, I think, and, and, and as Pastor, Pastor Joel said, look, are, are these your kids, my kids, or are these our kids? You know, are you unifying or are you dividing a family? Good, good, good. All right. So we're talking about families. I have somebody who's looking to start a family, but first they need a wife. <laughs> so the question is... <laughs> How do I find a godly wife? How do I gain the patience to wait for God to send her to me? So, men, <laughs> what are your answers? Well, I can comment on oh, that. Oh, yes, Dr. V. I just have, no, they can, they can fill in, but um, it says that he who finds a good wife, so you're not waiting for her, we're waiting for you. <laughs> right? The women are waiting for you. They're waiting to be found, so. You have your, your list of what you want in a person, and then you want her to love God more than anything, you know, and put, him, put a high priority. You want to see her actions, not only in what she says, but you want to see her in church. You want to see her giving and see her doing, and then you know what you like. You know she's got to be pleasing to your eye, right? And um, your characteristics have to blend the things that you'd like to do, but you have to go on the prowl. You have to look. Don't sit there and wait for her to come to you. Well, let me just say this, tag teaming off that. So he has to find her, but he better have his stuff together because she won't want him. Yeah, a job she's is a godly essential. woman. 
Because a godly woman is looking for a godly man, not a fake godly man who just comes to church just because he's looking for a woman. So we girls can point you out. We can read your mail. So you better really love God because she's looking at you at the corner of your eye during praise and worship, making sure you got your hands raised. She's seeing how many services you come to. He came to one once a month. No, he came to every service during the week. Oh, hallelujah. He's a good guy. And how is he dressed? Girls do look at how you're dressed. So try and look somewhat decent. These are just practical things. Do you girls agree with me? And don't smell. Okay. Like (laughs) don't smell bad. Please smell good. And you will get a woman. Yeah. You know, there's a Bible verse I have for that. And that is <laughs> that people look at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. People look at the outward appearance. Women look at the outward appearance. So it's okay to dress up, groom yourself, do all that. So anyways. Can I speak to the, <clears throat> to the girls? We're in not the letting house. the guys answer nope, this, but that's okay. <laughs> You know, for the girls in the house, don't don't give up. And also, guys, just don't go to the wrong places. Don't get desperate. Go to the wrong places because you will reap the fruit of that. And uh, my own story was I grew up in a church of several hundred, maybe 350 people. And I dated some guys that were not so saved, you know, Christians, but not so saved. And um, I remember saying to my mom, there's nobody in this church. I mean, I know everybody in this church. Are you serious? Do I have to wait for a husband? in this church, but it wasn't until I just um, abandoned everything and said, God, you're number one. I'm just going to serve God. I'm just going to put my face like Flint. I'm just going to go for God. And it was in that very church where I was born and raised one day, just once upon a time on one day, Mr. Wonderful walked in the door (laughs) and he came all the way from a far place, but he finally found me in that church so just serve god in the house get rooted get planted and just go for god and god will help you amen good awesome i love that there was a single question because that is family right and um my sister is single she's not here right now but i'm just letting y'all know okay so (laughs) she's 40 years old i'm only putting out a shout out because she's going to kill me on the live stream so and she's texting me right now knock it off so Due to my addiction, this is a question, due to my addiction, so they were in the past addicted to something. Um, She has lost, um, you know, the children don't trust her, but she's now in a good place and she wants them to trust her and she wants to rebuild that relationship. How do you suggest that she goes about reuniting her beautiful family? You know, I I was meditating on Joshua uh, 25, 14, where Joshua makes a command to Israel, as for me and my house will serve the Lord. Looking at that scripture as a whole, he's calling the children of Israel out from the forefathers ways that didn't work. Addictions, loss, all kinds of past. And Joshua makes a statement there, look, you want to follow the way of the Amorites. The Amorites were a tall, bearded, uh, Mudford and Sons kind of deal, uh, you know, uh, for gen to gen who understand that. They were, uh, they were warriors, and Joshua makes a command to them that he makes a command to us as a church. You have to leave the land that didn't work, and you have to leave the way of the forefathers that didn't work. And those were the addictions and the losses and all the problems that they carried. Joshua makes a command to us, and he makes a command to the children of Israel, and he put a stake in the ground, and he says, you must want to serve the Lord on purpose, by choice. If this woman, whoever she is, wants to make a choice to serve Jesus, she will bring her and her children into her personal promised land. She will bring them into destiny. But she has to leave the way of the forefathers. She has to leave the way of the fatherless, like Joshua did to the children of Israel. Look, and he actually made them celebrate and witness before everybody that they're going to do it because he was passing away. So Joshua's statement relates to us personally. We find many broken families at the rock. Brokenness is not the issue. It's now where are you heading with that what you carry? And are you taking yourself and your children's children's children into the promised land God's chosen you? If you do, then they will start trusting you. If you do, you'll bring your whole family with you and God will restore and heal and give you the promise for your children's children's children will be blessed. So good. And I think that can just go for all parents. Every parent. 
So what an awesome time. I, we have like a ton of questions. I think we should do another panel maybe at the end of the parenting series or something. I mean, look at this. So we have to wrap it up because Jen to Jen has a really bad rep of ending late. Okay, so we are going to get a new rep. So can we just give everyone a hand up here? And thank you guys. Pastor Joel, Reverend Dr. Vanessa, Pastor Eleanor, Pastor Richard, Pastor Michelle, thank you all for coming. And we are just excited. And your questions are just special and precious to us. So what we can do is, if you still want to get your questions answered, um, go ahead and you can call the church office if there's some serious questions and ask for a pastor to answer them. Email us. If you email us, we, can, we will send you an email back. So I've heard people say, you know, oh, you guys are just so busy. Listen, just email us. It's fine. Not a big deal. That's why we're here is to serve you and to love you. And so did you get something from tonight? Awesome. What a good, good time to just be together. But we never want to close out a service without an opportunity to get to know Jesus, just to run from our sin. And just like Pastor Joel was saying, go to the house of God, go to God. And so tonight I want to talk to you and I want you to examine your hearts and examine your life and see where you're at. And you say, oh, Pastor Jess, what are you talking about right now? This is what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about you and God. And you say, okay, fine. What about me and God? Well, you and God, what are you going to do with him? Do you live your life fully and completely for him? And if you were to die tonight, where would you end up? Would you open your eyes in heaven or would you open your eyes in hell? You say, well, I, I don't know, Pastor Jesus. I don't know. I hope I would make it to heaven. I hope I would make it. Well, you can't hope your way into heaven. Well, I'm not sure. I, I don't know. I, I have no idea if I'd make it into heaven. Well, I'm talking to you tonight. And you say, yes, for sure I am. Well, then if you're saying, yes, for sure, I'm going to heaven, you need to be praying. And this is what I'm asking you because you can't just expect to get into heaven because we're American. And so many times we've been called the Christian nation. You know, we, we are the ones that were founded in Christ. Well, not any longer. This, this world we live in is very tainted. And it doesn't serve God. It doesn't love God the way it should. And you are not going to get to heaven just by being American or eating apple pie or driving a Chevrolet. You're not going to get to heaven because your parents told you, oh, you know what? You're a Christian. And, and then they went to church on Christmas and Easter. No, 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 no. That's not how this works. You get to heaven by asking Jesus to come into your heart and to be the Lord and Savior of your life. Now, let me tell you, he loves you with all of his heart. He died on the cross for you, for your sins, to wipe away everything that has been in your past and to start something brand new. And today he's calling you home. Tonight he brought you here and he's saying, hey, here I am. I'm talking about family because I want you to join my family tonight. And you say, well, gosh, that just sounds amazing. I want that, Pastor Jess. This is what you need to do. If you have never asked God to come into your heart and be the Lord and Savior of your life, I, you, I want you to raise your hand, but not right now. This We'll do it all together. You say, well, I have hope. I hope I can make it into heaven. Remember, you cannot hope your way into heaven. That is not how it works. So what we're going to do is make sure you get into heaven. You're going to raise your hand with everybody else. You say, okay, well, you know, one time in my life, I did ask God to come into my heart and I served him and I've been kind of in and out. I've been coming and going. That's called being lukewarm. You're a little in, a little out, a little hot, a little cold. And in Revelation, God talks about that. And he says, you can't be hot or cold or, or be hot or cold but don't be lukewarm because when you are lukewarm I will vomit you from my mouth you say gosh that is really like gross you know what? he's using some descriptive words because he's very serious about salvation he's very serious about your heart he's very serious about your soul he loves you so much that he wants you to be his child and so you say okay oh, I've, I've been lukewarm you need to get right you need to stop walking the fence tonight tonight is your night to get right you need to be raising your hand with everybody else. So this is how we're going to do it. We're going to go one, two, three. And if you've never asked God to come into your heart and be the Lord and Savior of your life, and you're saying, yeah, I totally want that. I want to start new. I want to re refresh. I want to have a family like you guys talked about. I want restoration. That's you tonight. You need to raise your hand. You say, oh, I just, I've hoped that I've been going to heaven. I'm not sure. Well, don't make, don't be unsure. Make sure. So raise your hand tonight. And if you've been lukewarm in this house, you need to get right because there is no other option for you. God is calling you home. He has a purpose, a, dan a plan, and a destination destiny for you. And he says, it's time to come home, child. Be part of my family. So on the count of three, one, two, three, raise your hand. Right on. Here we go. Raise them. Don't be embarrassed. And let me tell you why. One, because everyone in this room is cheering you on. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
Anybody in that family room? Eight. Thank you. If you've raised your hand and I haven't seen it, go ahead and raise it. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Listen, young and old, come into the house of God tonight. Fourteen, fifteen. Raise your hand. You say, oh man, my heart is like stirring right now. I see you, sixteen. My heart's stirring and I wish she would just be quiet. I don't want to, I don't like this part of the service. I just wish she'd be quiet. Listen, that's not me bugging you. The Holy Spirit's drawing you close and saying, I love you. And it's time for you and I to connect. It's time for me to walk life with you and do this thing called life together. So raise your hand. Give your heart to God tonight. 17. Anybody else? I'm going to scan the room one more time. 18. 19. If I've already seen your hand, you don't need to raise it. All right, 19 people. Well, let's give a hand to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo, I'm excited. All right, this is what we're going to do. You don't get saved by raising your hand. You get saved by asking Jesus to come into your heart and be the Lord and Savior of your life. So what we're going to do is grab your, your coats and your purses and your Bible, your mom or your dad if you're a kid, and grab a friend if you need a friend. Do not be embarrassed. Come on up. Run to the altar. God is ready to meet you, and everybody's going to stand up with you, and we're going to just give you a hand. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou biddest me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am. love it. I'm seeing families up here. What a beautiful picture of heaven. Well, this is what we're going to do. Pastor Joel, who was talking to you earlier, he is just a wonderful man of God. Did you guys enjoy him? He's amazing. So he's going to pray with you and he's going to pray a prayer with you to ask Jesus to come into your heart because you don't get saved just by coming up front. You get saved by asking him to come into your heart and be the Lord and Savior of your life, okay? So I want everyone to turn and go with him and he's going to go ahead and pray with you and give you some good stuff. Let's give them a hand on their way out. Hey, you just heard that altar call. You just wanted to give God all of your heart and all of your life. Now let me lead you simply in a prayer of inviting Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior. In fact, why don't you just go ahead and listen to me and go ahead and close your eyes and just repeat these words after me. I'll go slow. You repeat them. Say these words. Say, Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus Christ is your only begotten Son and that you sent Him for me and that He died for me on that cross at Calvary. I believe that His blood washes away my sins, that I am now a new creature in Christ Jesus. And I thank you, Lord. I receive you now and forever as my Lord and as my Savior. I'm going to turn from sin and I'm going to turn with all of my heart and all of my life to you, Jesus, as my Lord and as my Savior. Let it be known in heaven as well as upon the earth that I am born again. I'm a child of God, that I'm saved, and I'm headed for heaven and denying my presence in hell. Thank you, Jesus. I'm alive forevermore. Love you so much. God bless you guys. Everybody just say amen and receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. So talk to you later. God bless you. Bye-bye.